There's a saying, if you allow your passion to become your purpose, it will one day become your profession. Our job is to give people the opportunity at the fish of a lifetime. But on our days off, it's our turn. I think there's some fish gonna come in off the offshore after that storm, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can get on those fish on the beach. They're still gonna be pushing in, but I think that, that we'll have our shots for sure. Good news is if we can find the pod, they should be hungry. Oh, if they should chew the bottom of the boat Absolutely. out, we find them, so. I think that uh, we saw a lot of people leaving this morning, so everybody's got the tarp fever again, so hopefully we'll make it happen. Oh, me too. Here on the west coast of Florida, you know, the Big Bend area down into the Naples area, uh, you get these migrations in the summertime that are basically temperature based, water temperature based. And this can be a really fun place to fish in the summer months. We like to say the west coast is the best coast. My home waters is Charlotte Harbor. We spend a lot of time, you know, at this time of year looking for this tarpon. You know, I primarily fish for tarpon April through really early July, at least, you know, in the passes for those migratory species, but especially out on the beaches. Oh, oh, okay. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right, let me clear this line. Yep. All right. Oh, he's angry. Let me go to him. A little bit. Give All me right. a little room to play with. Way to go, just buddy. Cut, he just cut me. No, come on. Say it ain't so. He just cut me. Uh. Sometimes it's just one of those things where you just put your head down, bite your tongue, and soak it in. So our backup plan, uh, you know, we were hoping not to have to get it into that, but you know, sometimes tarpon can be what they are and, you know, difficult some days. And, you know, we had an unusual weather pattern that came through and uh, kind of did a little shake up on those tarpon. So our, our backup plan was really uh, some of our backcountry snook. Right now we're in, uh, we're in the summertime pattern. So water's starting to warm up. Uh, fish are really reacting to those warmer temperatures and, and starting to eat readily. Uh, it's hot, it's sticky, uh, lots of traffic, but um, this is one of our favorite times of year because everything starts to come together. Got him that time. That time he ate it. Oh yeah, decent snook. Yeah, man. Not bad snook. No, today none of them are bad. He didn't really wait too long. He was pretty... <laughs> he was right on it? He was pretty excited about what... What just got laid in front of him there? Oh, I think I can handle this one, Jack. You, you got that? Yeah, but. And you have pretty fish down here, man. Oh my goodness. Big blow up. Oh yeah. Right on the end of that oyster bar. That one to our to our east. right. You know when uh, when we're looking for those snook and we just happen to be on the edge of this bar where the transition from grass to sand was, the sand was as bright white as it could be, and we Jeremy and I both see this giant log kind of meandering down through the edge, just just rolling through. So Jay throws in once, pops it, no no hookup. Okay, throws in again, pops it. Bait keeps his bait there. Fish spins around in circles trying to find the bait, pops it again, and we never hook the fish. And then all of a sudden, oh, oh, that's a grown one. Okay, which way is he going? He's going left. Right at my, <laughs> right at my line, right? Yeah. All right. But he's staying, I'm trying to keep him off the top of the oyster there. All right. Okay, I'm all right. I'm gonna come in. Coming at me. Oh 
little better. A little better. Woo, yeah. See? A little patience. <laughs> we got on it a little bit. Look at that. I'll tell you what, 2010, it's hard to catch them like that. Oh yeah, and it's because they didn't exist. Yeah, they closed that season after that big freeze. Mm -hmm. and, and now our stuck fishery is getting right. Eight years later, they opened it, what, three years ago? And this is still, look at all these little mullet running for their life. <laughs> They're running from this thing, yeah. one of these. Yeah. This is, uh, awesome. this is the bread and butter where I'm at. Yeah, no Absolutely. Doubt. And that's probably still a male, but it's getting really close. It's close to changing. So you know, you know, from guiding and just catching these, but snook are one of the only species that change sex. Not a lot of people know, but right. you know, about that 27 inch range, um, they go from male to female. And that's why it's so important to release those big fish. Right. You know, any given spawn season, they get 500,000 babies. Absolutely. So. Um, this is an important fish. Absolutely. Let's get it back in the water and oh. release her. Good job. And that right there was, was a phenomenal time for both of us because that was a fun bite to witness. Our waters are, they tend to be a little tannic. You know, as we get more and more rains throughout their summer patterns, um, and a lot of people kind of look at that and they say, well, I don't know if that's the, the right color. I need to be fishing crystal clear water. Well, the water is clear. And it's clean. It's just needs. It has a little tannins in it from the river runoffs and and the mangroves. But for me, I actually like fishing a little stained water. The fish can't see you as well. I mean, you certainly can't see them as well. But I think it doesn't affect the bite, and I think you can actually get the fish a little bit more excited because they don't even know you're there. Little guy, healthy fish. Pretty. Look how silver and yellow he is. Trying to catch that trophy snook uh, can sometimes be very difficult. It's, it's not like you just go and, and, and go to a spot and pitch a bait in there and you're gonna get the bite and land that fish. If you're lucky enough to get a bite from a fish that size, there then in turn comes the fight. Ooh. He's gotta come out and see well, that though. Well, come get it, come get it. Well. This is a tasty pilchard. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, he ate it too with a dead one. That guy's gonna get me in the bushes. Gah. No, he's not. Yes, he just about did, dude. There you go. He's out. This guy's got a nice, nice set of shoulders on him right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take his wee pee off and I'll, I'll grab that one. And this is, this is pretty wild stuff. Circus snook. It's a good, it's a good, good fish. Look at that one behind him. That one behind him ain't bad either. Good fish, bud. Beautiful. So this fish right here basically like freight train. Yeah. That bait came out of those sticks. Wow, we barely landed that one, didn't we? Yeah. Look at that leader. Yeah. Oh yeah, pretty healthy one right there. Jeremy yeah. Lee, that's a good one, buddy. It's a beautiful fish. All pecked up, dorsaled up. Look how black the bottom of his tail is. I know. What a way to uh, close it out today. Yeah, this man. has been nothing short of an epic bite. And uh, we have been catching them. That's a great fish right there. This was a lot of fun. This is what keeps bringing them to Florida. You know, fish like that, get some numbers, get some size, to make them happy. Keep Couldn't them, have gone any better. Keep them coming back for more. We were fortunate enough to really, really catch some nice quality snook that day. 
and uh, it was a lot of ways it kind of spoiled us, you know, and when Jeremy and I are actually pulling on fish, you know, and just having a ball catching fish, this is what, you know, I remember as a kid, that's exactly what I wanted to do my entire life. Little did I know it was going to lead me to the guide business. Charlotte Harbor is a special place to me because it's where I go to kind of wind down and um, it's just a beautiful old Florida feel. You get back in some of these islands and you kind of forget that you're on the west coast of Florida with millions and millions of people. It's just a neat fishery and a special place and something that I think and, and would hope that would be preserved for you know many centuries to come.